Welcome to Second Chance Garage. Okay, this is the tapered shaft motor that I had sitting around forever. And I had decided, I ground it, I started the motor, I ground the shaft down so it would no longer be a tapered shaft. So then I started grinding a keyway in to put on a centrifugal clutch, which has got a keyway in it. All right, so this is what happened. I got it this far, and as you can see, my keyway was coming along pretty good, but I have to have the keyway come back to here. And let me see if I can do this. My phone. I dropped my phone the other day and the lens is all cracked up. I actually need the keyway to come back about that far. So I've got that much grinding to do to get deeper. Okay. Well, where the problem with that is, I'll show you what the problem with that is. A good old Harbor Freight grinder. This is the problem. <laughs> you can't go back any farther because if you try to, you're going to get into the aluminum housing because the wheel's too big. All right. So then I figured out sometimes you don't see the forest for the trees. I'm making it way more difficult than it has to be. Grinding this, keyway in, obviously I'm not going to be able to grind all the way back to there. So, sometimes, like I said, you just don't see the answer. You take your centrifugal clutch and you slide it out to about here. Then, you go back here. If I can get a finger back there, put about four tack welds from here to here. Four tack welds is all it would take. Then you can adjust, leave this sticking out just a little bit. You want to have, let's see if I can get enough room. You want to have enough room that you can put your washer and your bolt in this hole here, tighten it down, and that holds this. And this will be tack welded to the back here, which will, when the shaft spins, makes everything spin. And it's a centrifugal clutch. Anybody that don't know how they work, here's the back of one. So when this part's spinning, it throws these weights out up against this. See, right now it'll spin. The faster it spins, the more these weights slide out against this part right here which locks it in place, which allows ever this unit to spin, which will drive your chain, which runs to the rear sprocket on my dad's go-kart. So, like I said, sometimes you make things harder than it's gotta be. So now since I started grinding this shaft, I've decided now that I'm going to go ahead and fill weld this back in. And then it's got a, down here, it's actually got a hole with, uh, that you're supposed to put a bolt in. Well, I got into the threads when I started grinding, as you can see. So once I get this fill welded back in nice and smooth and level, grinder nice and smooth then I'll run a tap in here to tap these threads back to the way they were because most of them are still in good shape retap them and then do the welding like I was talking about okay so then it's going on this go-kart that was my father's he raced in high school and it had a Pecumsey chainsaw motor on it. And you had to push start it. 
Well, it had been hanging in my grandfather's shed for over 50 years. I wasn't even a gleam in my daddy's eye when he was running this. And so, uh, anyway, a bunch of the bunch of his brothers and stuff ran it too. And so then when my grandfather passed away, I wound up with it. I wound up taking the Becumsey engine off, trading it off or something because dad said when he was racing it, it would run about 60 miles an hour. And I'm just wanting to ride around the yard. It's that's way too fast, you know. So anyway, everything. The messed up part about it is it's got dual engine mounts, so it was set up and it's it's a live drive, you know, posi. It's got a brake over there. It's got the original sprocket back here, but where I ran into the problem is everything was backwards. The motor was mounted over here originally. I believe it was over here. No, it was over there. Had to be over there. Okay, so then when I went to put a lawnmower motor on it, we figured out that it had to be mounted on the opposite side because chainsaw motor spun one way, the lawnmower motor spun the other way. So I had to take all this off, all this off, everything, and switch it from one side to the other side. So that way it would operate correctly. So anyway... I've got that much done. I think I bent the shaft a little bit. The rear axle shaft, that is solid steel with a keyway in it. I, it kind of looks like I did because when you spin it, you can see that the sprocket wobbles a little bit. So I don't know if I bent this here because this bolts to the shaft with a keyway. So I'm not sure if I bent this or whether I actually bent the sprocket a little bit because that is a really flimsy sprocket. So, oh, and then this is the throttle right here. Runs over to here. I just got it zip tied right now. So with the motor set in, hmm. Well, I can't remember now, but for some reason I had to bend this. That might be the brake cable. That's what it is. That's my brake over there. That's my throttle over there. So I had to run it over here because I've got to run a piece of linkage from, which I don't have yet, from here. Uh, over to there. So I've got to get on this pulls forwards, which locks the brake up. So this was originally on this side, and this brake was actually mounted where this is. And it was long enough. But now I've got to get another rod to run from here over to here, get that to work, then the throttle cable is right here which goes over there along the and it ain't long enough to get to the motor because <laughs> I had to switch sides because the chainsaw motor spins in one direction and a lot riding a lawn mower spins the other the this engine spins the opposite direction so anyway but she's gonna have the racing slicks on it so that way I can ride it through the yard and spin it and slide it around being posy drive you know especially in tall grass or wet grass it's gonna be a lot of fun but anyway that's where i'm at right now trying to resurrect it and uh there's the old thunder chicken it's pretty much done uh yeah dad cut these uh 
floor mats for it. And those floor mats are actually uh, just door mats that he found for like three bucks at Walmart. And he just trimmed them to get them to fit on there. So it looks a little more finished. This actually is holding those two pieces together. And it's, uh, I do have some bolts in it, but nah, most of them didn't, wouldn't hold. So I just used Gorilla Tape. Kind of tried to make it look like a like a pen stripe, but hey, it is what it is. It works. It ain't fancy, but it works. So anyway, that's what I've been up to today so far. So anyway, I will talk with you later. If you like it, subscribe. Second Chance Garage out.